morning good morning to all of us praise the lord that we are here once again to praise him to worship him and to listen to the word of god even through online services hope and pray that we are always looking forward to join and to listen to watch online services we know that this time is uh, so challenging to all of us. We cannot go to church. We cannot gather together. But let's not giving up together. We can still gather together wherever you are. Online, we can still feel the presence of the Lord even in our house, in our own room. And if you have a prayer request, uh, just message us or just comment down below. And we will love to pray for you. And it says in Psalm 147, verses 1 to 7, Praise the Lord, how good it is to, to sing praises to our God, how pleasant and fit, fitting to praise Him. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. The Lord sustains the humble but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with grateful praise. Make music to our God on the harp. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our precious Heavenly Father, we come before you today, O God, with a humble heart, Father God, knowing, Lord, that you are the God who is in control and the God who can do everything, O God. Thank you so much, Father God. Thank you so much. And even today, Father God, that you are in control in our services, even online, Father. We pray, O oh God, those who are listening, Father God, that you will touch the heart, O oh God. You will touch the heart, Father God. And Lord, we know, O oh God, that your plan is always going to be prevail, O oh Lord God. And Lord, we pray even Pastor Daniel is going to share the message for today, O oh God. We pray for the anointing, O oh God. We pray that your message will come alive to all of us, Father God. And we are not only hearer of your word, but it's also doer of your word, O oh God. Thank you so much, O oh God. Bless our services, O oh God, even through online, Father God. But Lord, you will expand, O oh Lord God, your message, O oh God, that there will be many people will hear, O oh God. Thank you so much, Father God. Thank you so much. Bless all the listeners, O oh God. Bless them, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Welcome once again to Canaan Church, Sri Hatamas, Kuala Lumpur. I trust that everything is well with your soul. Today, we're going to enter into the final part of the sermon series that is living the gospel life based on 1 Thessalonians. And today, I'd like to draw your attention to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 19 to 22. I'd like to entitle my sharing today, Life in the Spirit. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 19 to 22, and I'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible. It says here, verse 19, Do not quench the Spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances, but examine everything carefully. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Let's pray. Lord, we are so thankful today we can come in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. We want to welcome your Holy Spirit. And we pray by faith, believing that something good is going to happen. Praying that the Spirit of God is going to pour out your fresh anointing upon your word. Pour out your fresh uh, anointing upon your people as we come together and look into your precious word. We thank you. We commit all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Life in the Spirit. You know, the subject of the Holy Spirit is hardly emphasized in many believers' life. As we understand very well that the Holy Spirit is not a force. The Holy Spirit is not an energy. But the Holy Spirit, according to scriptures, that the Holy Spirit is divine. He is part of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Apart from being God himself, he is also a person. And that's where the Holy Spirit, as we know very well throughout the entire Bible in the Old and the New Testament, the Holy Spirit is active. He's active in creation. He's active in the life of the patriots, the judges, the kings, even the prophets. And he's also active in the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. Likewise, he is active in revealing God's word through chosen men. The Holy Spirit is also active in the early church, whereby we can see it in the book of Acts. And Jesus himself also <laughs> emphasized the importance of the Holy Spirit of the Holy Spirit in our lives. <clears throat> Today, friends, the Holy Spirit is still active. The Holy Spirit is still doing His work in the life of believers in all areas. Here, we are able to see that there are some workings of the Holy Spirit where the Holy Spirit plays a vital role in each one of our lives. He convicts, he sanctifies, he corrects, he empowers us, he grants us spiritual gifts, he renews us, and so on and so forth. Without the Holy Spirit, we can do nothing, absolutely nothing. And that's where we need the fresh anointing of God daily in the life in order to have life in the Spirit. The Bible tells us that the same Holy Spirit who has raised Jesus from the dead is also living in us. What a privilege, what a joy that the Spirit of God is just not confined to God, Jesus Himself, but the Holy Spirit is also made a love available for you and I today. Do you desire to live life in the Spirit? Do you desire to be energized to have victorious Christian life? Do you desire 
to live a spirit-filled life. And today, through the scriptures taken from verses 19 to 22, there are three ways to live life in the spirit. Three ways to live a spirit-filled life. Firstly, is do not quench the Holy Spirit. Verse 19, as we have read, simply tells us, do not quench the Holy Spirit. It simply means, do not disobey, do not stifle, or even do not suppress the workings of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So the question is, how? How can we quench? How can we stifle? How can we suppress and disobey the Holy Spirit? Well, there are four areas that I'd like to share with you. Firstly is when we disobey His convictions. The Holy Spirit, according to John chapter 16, verse 8, is that He convicts us of our sins. And this is where we as believers of the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit convicts us when we have done something wrong to Him. His desire is not to judge us at all times. It is like parents punishing their, their children without any reason. It is not the uh, character of the Holy Spirit just to punish. But the issue here is He convicts us. In other words, it's for our own good. Parents who discipline their children is because they know it is for their own good. And likewise, when the Holy Spirit convicts us, it is really telling us the importance what is not right for us not to do. And this is where we need the Holy Spirit. When we receive the Spirit of God into our lives and when we accept Jesus, and this is where God will continue to renew and change and transform us to be like Jesus. So the first thing that we can quench the Holy Spirit is when we disobey His convictions. <clears throat> Secondly, we can also quench the Holy Spirit when we despise prophetic utterances. Prophecies, as we know, are not forecasts or predictions, but prophecies are foretelling and foretelling. In other words, it is really true. The Spirit of God that enables an individual like a prophet to prophesy, to foretell what's going to happen at that appointed time or in the near future. It is really through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Many believe in the Bible that I'm sure even scriptures commands us to, earn, <coughs> to earnestly desire the gift of prophecy. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1, and all the other gifts as well, refusing to do so, especially prophetic utterances, because we do not want to add into scriptures, is simply well inten intentional or simply well intentioned disobedience. So it is very important for us to embrace prophetic utterances. God is still speaking today through you and I. God is still speaking through His people. And He will guide us. He will lead us. He will inform us. And this is where we must not despise prophetic utterances. <coughs> Thirdly, we can also quench the Holy Spirit when we deny and choose not to depend on the Holy Spirit. 
You know, we believe the entire Bible is the authoritative and infallible word of God. But said, but if we just believe portion of the Bible and we do not believe especially the revelatory gifts, the revelatory gifts are prophetic ministry, word of wisdom, and word of knowledge. If we choose not to believe those areas of spiritual gifts, then the Bible tells us that we can also quench the Spirit of God. So we must be open to the entire and full gospel of the Holy Spirit. We must be open to what God is able to do through the Spirit of God. And finally, we can quench the Spirit when we tolerate any unrepentant sin personally and in the church. The Holy Spirit, as I said earlier, is a person and He has feelings. Even in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, it says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. So this is where so important for us to daily search our hearts and be cleansed by the Spirit of God. So every day when we do our devotion, first and foremost is search our hearts and be open to the Holy Spirit to cleanse us, to renew our mind and to purify our spirit. You know, when we are open daily to the Holy Spirit, and this is where we will not be able to quench the Spirit of God. So in order to live life in the Spirit, first and foremost, do not quench the Holy Spirit. Secondly is, we must learn to discern through the Holy Spirit. Learn to discern through the Holy Spirit. Verses 20 to 22 again, it says, But examine everything carefully. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from every form of evil. So we must learn to discern all things. Learning to discern is to learn to distinguish what is good and what is Evil is to learn to distinguish what is truth from error. The Bible tells us that Jesus, when he was challenged by the question of is there marriage in the resurrection? And Jesus answered them, saying that you guys, you are in error because you do not know the scriptures. And so I believe it's so important for us is that when we have the Holy Spirit in our life, we will be able to discern what is right and what is wrong. We will be able to discern what is the truth from error. So in practical forms is how can we be discerning? How are we able to discern and distinguish through the Holy Spirit? Three better things I believe we can do is first and foremost, examine everything through scriptures. Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter verses 3, or 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 to 17. It says, All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So knowing the scriptures is so important. And everything, when we listen to messages, when we listen as far as different aspects of materials, we must, according to the Bible, 
is examine everything through scriptures. Compare with the word of God whether it is biblical or not biblical. The second area how to be discerning is recognize that they are both genuine and false spiritual teachings. First John chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. We always say that we are living in the last days. And there are many signs that are leading us towards the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> and the Bible is advising us, is telling us to be careful, to test all spirits. <clears throat> to test all spiritual teachings. Today, there are all kinds of teachings that we can get even from the website. And if we are not strong in the word, then we can sway to some false teachings. And that's where it is important for us to live a spirit-filled life, to live life in the spirit, you must learn to discern and recognize that they are both genuine and false spiritual teachings. Thirdly, how to be discerning is hold on to what is good and abstain from all form of evil. Galatians chapter 5 verses 16 to 28. I just want to read this to you. It says, <coughs> it says here, so I say, Walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. So hold on to what is good and abstain from all form of evil. One of the things I believe is to engage and allow the Holy Spirit to transform and change us, change us and cultivate the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 23 says, But the Spirit or the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. So hold on to what is good. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, is a good spirit, not a bad spirit. And this is where He wants us to be changed to be transformed daily in our lives so that we will live a victorious Christian life. I trust and pray that today you will have the desire to learn to be discerning, to learn to distinguish what is right and wrong, what is truth and what is error. All this can only be done when we engage ourselves with self-discipline into learning and read and study the Word of God. Third way in order to live life in the Spirit or a Spirit-filled life is desire the Holy Spirit. Desire the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 1 it says, follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. Now here the context is really encouraging us to earnestly desire after spiritual gifts. And the question is that, that in order to desire spiritual gifts, 
we must desire the giver of spiritual gifts. That is none other than the Holy Spirit. So it's important for us to have that hunger, to have the thirst, to have the passion for the Holy Spirit. If it is true that God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in God, then how can we not, for the sake of our own joy and happiness, seek to enjoy God in the person of the Spirit? <clears throat> so desiring God is really including God the Holy Spirit. I trust and pray that you begin to see the importance of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because even Jesus himself, before he started his public ministry, he was anointed and the Spirit of God came upon his life. And before Jesus ascended back to heaven, one of the things that he has informed us, telling us is, is the importance of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Before he ascended to heaven, as we know, he informed the disciples to hunger and wait for the gift from on high. And that gift from on high is none other than the Holy Spirit. So here once again is desire the Holy Spirit. How? I'd like to share with you three practical things. Number one, have a heart for the Holy Spirit. We must have a heart. As I said earlier, we must have a hunger. We must have a desire. We must have a passion for the Holy Spirit. And we must welcome the Holy Spirit into our life. And when we do that, then we begin to be open to the realm of the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God will continue to guide us will continue to teach us, will continue to lead us to the path of righteousness. Secondly, is be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, it says, Do not get drunk with wine or on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Here, the word be filled is a continuous tense telling us to be filled daily in our life. As Pentecostals, we believe that this word being filled is, is being baptized in the Holy Spirit through speaking in tongues. We believe in tongue speaking. Now that is the initial evidence of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And we must be filled in the Spirit daily in our life. Ask the Lord to renew our spirit, to renew us daily as we seek Him, as we come before Him, as we speak in tongues daily in our lives. And this is where I believe we will be energized. Even Paul himself says, I speak in tongues more than all of you. Simply telling us the importance of being filled with the Holy Spirit daily in our life. And the third practical aspect of that desire is engage in times of worship and be open to the Holy Spirit to speak. You know, in Acts chapter 13, verse 2, we're able to see one great example of what happened when we engage in a time of worship. Here in Acts 13, verse 2, it says, While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit, <coughs> the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. It's amazing that when we engage ourselves in worshipping the Lord in spirit and in truth, and at the same time, be open to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to speak to us. <clears throat> it can be through prophetic word. 
It can be through a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom. And I trust and pray that today you will desire after the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Have a genuine excitement of what the Holy Spirit can do in our midst. It is the Spirit of God that will always energize us, that will always draw us to the things of God. And I pray that today you will hunger after the Holy Spirit. In conclusion, remember to live a Spirit-filled life. Remember these three things. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Do not learn to discern through the Holy Spirit. And thirdly, desire the Holy Spirit. Don't cage the Holy Spirit. He wants to flow. Don't quench the Holy Spirit. He wants to grow. So friends, if you want to experience life in the Spirit, these are the three ways. And I trust and pray that you get excited and engage yourself in a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit. I believe there's one prayer that you and I can pray together today. That is a prayer of St. Augustine to the Holy Spirit. And I believe all of us can pray this prayer together as you look into this PowerPoint slides, wherever you are coming from, joining us in this service. And let's pray this prayer together even right now. Breathe in me, O Holy Spirit, that my thoughts may all be holy. Act in me, O Holy Spirit, that my work too may be holy. Draw my heart, O Holy Spirit, that I love, but what is holy. Strengthen me, O Holy Spirit, to defend all that is holy. Amen. I trust and pray that today, as we have prayed this prayer, that you, we will continue to be guided, to be led by the Spirit of God. Let's pray. Lord, we are so thankful today. A great reminder in our spiritual life that the importance of living a Spirit-filled life. Lord, we want to repent. There are times where we just live according to our plans and according to our ways, and we have neglected the importance of the Holy Spirit in our life. Today, dear God, we want to come before you that we will not quench the Holy Spirit. Instead, Lord, help us to learn to be discerning and help us, oh God, to always have a hunger and a desire after the Holy Spirit. Bless us, we pray, and continue to teach us Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say it, Amen. I want to pray a prayer of benediction, even as we dismiss, even right now. Amen. May God Himself, the God of peace, sanctify you true and true. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Amen.